Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog here for our Summer of Carnage. And uh, we have gotten so much movie news this week. It's pretty awesome. We got Andy Serkis announced officially as the director of Venom 2. Then we also had him do an interview uh, while he's on the circuit for other projects he's working on. And he talked about, you know, that the script is already being written or it's already written by Kelly Marcel, but she's bouncing ideas off of uh, Tom Hardy and they're kind of developing things together with Tom being the producer of the movie and everything. So Andy's like, look, the story they're kind of working on I'm coming in to kind of, you know, bring the characters to another level and add, you know, try to add something visually to this movie uh, that I think, you know, the movie and the, for this specific story could really need, you know, really needs. And uh, that's obviously, I think, a reference to Carnage and uh, and maybe the tone of the movie, changing it up a little bit. So I'm excited. I can't wait to see what he brings to the table. I hope some of that dark humor, that gallows humor is still there and some of that body horror stuff, but play more off of it. Like the first movie kind of dip their toe in the water like hey look this is kind of body horror or hey this is kind of dark humor uh, but they never really fully committed and I'd like to see Andy and the group here really commit to that type of tone because uh, I think that will really bring out even if it's still PG-13 I think it will bring out a, a darker edge uh, to this storyline which it needs because it's a carnage storyline so I'm very excited so we got that news and then today or just yesterday actually uh, we got Michelle Williams officially saying that she's back which is great because we weren't sure there for a minute she was saying like she was at first she was like oh yeah you know we'll see how it goes you know she didn't really seem committed to come back for a second movie at least that's how it feels i mean i may be you know misreading her her quotes and stuff from other interviews but it didn't seem like she was fully committed but now it looks like she is so, you know, she's doing a press for her latest film as well and they sat her down there like hey did you hear about venom 2 are you coming back and she said yes i'm in uh, and so it looks like the news of andy circus really got her excited to be back on this project and she says uh, and i quote i'm such a fan of andy's and i'm so inspired by what he's able to accomplish and uh, he's so gifted in such a specific way and i'm very excited to learn from him and be around him and that is uh, from an interview, and this is from Superhero Hype. I don't think this is where the original interview came from, but this is just where I'm reading it from. So I'll put a link to uh, down below to Superhero Hype so you can check out the article uh, yourself and see some other information on here. Um, but then she goes on to say that she hopes she gets to play uh, She-Venom a little bit more. And obviously recently she's kind of pushed for equal pay for uh, male and female actors in Hollywood and stuff. And so she made like a comment, like, you know, kind of having fun with it. Like, yeah, I hope I get equal time as She-Venom as Tom gets as Venom. And obviously she's kind of having some fun there. Um, but uh, but also, obviously, she, you know, she stands for that, um, you know, that, you know, equal rights and everything like that, and which is great. You know, I'm all for that, too. Um, I think if people put in the hard work, they should get what other people who put in the hard work get as well. And so I'm excited to see her come back on this franchise. Obviously, you know, I was very excited for her in the first movie. But, you know, with the wig, you know, and some of the stuff they do with her in the movie, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not great. And then there's really no reason why at the end she's kind of dressed in that plaid skirt or nothing. Because uh, I remember saying that in the trailer. I was like... There better be a reason why she's dressed like that. Like maybe like a Scottish, like a parade event that she's at. And she's like, you know, wearing that kind of like kilt dress thing, that plaid uh, skirt. Um, but there really wasn't. There was just like, you know, they, they just threw her in it. She looked great in it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I was just kind of like, wh why? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so you know, because she's like you know, a lawyer and she, you know, all this stuff. So I was like, yeah, not that lawyers can't have fun. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But it just, it the, the wardrobe a little bit threw me off in some scenes in the first movie. Some of her hairstyle uh, threw me off because I was like, wow, just keep her with short hair. She looks great with short hair. Um, you know, nowhere in the comics do you need to be like that accurate to Anne. And even though the hair she had wasn't even that accurate to Anne. So I was, you know, I could see maybe on some level where she was like, ah, I don't know if I'm ready to die back into this franchise. I want to see maybe who's directing it, who else is coming back, when it's going to happen, if it aligns with other schedules that I have, you know, I'm sure it's very business, you know, I mean, this is an entertainment business. So I'm sure she was looking at it that way. And that's probably why she came across, at least to me in early interviews, uh, after the movie came out that she wasn't sure if she was coming back. But seeing her this excited with Andy is great, because the reason she wanted to be in the first movie was because of Tom. And I think a lot of people were drawn to the project by Tom. He was directing, or not directing it, he's producing it, but he was starring in it. And a lot of people were like, hey, I haven't had a chance to work with him. Or Riz Ahmed's like, oh, I've known Tom for years and I've always wanted to work with him. And same with Andy. Andy's known Tom for years too and has always wanted to work together, uh, both of them. So it's nice to see this all happening. And I think this will bring a nice vibe behind the cameras to this movie um, and maybe add, you know, a more fun and, uh, you know, 
lighter and yet darker at times with Carnage uh, tones to this. I think it'll be really great seeing all these uh, characters get re-explored under the eyes and lens of someone different like Andy Serkis, who works with actors as an actor, too. Um, I think that's going to bring something to the table. So seeing her so excited, um, you know, is, is awesome. And she's like, you know, please, I hope I get to do more She Venom stuff. And I wouldn't mind that either. As we know in the comics, uh, Anne has been She Venom like two or three times before her passing. And I'm wondering if that storyline is going to play out at all. Like, is, is Anne going to become She Venom again in this story? Is Carnage going to kill her? Is she going to die? Like, are they going to go down that route? Are they going to introduce Dylan? You know, like, like there, I mean, there's so much because there's so much that happened in the comics now between the first movie and the second movie that I would imagine at some point they're probably going to turn their eye to it on some level. Like, they may still go, no, we're going to stick to classic stories or write our own stories, um, but or take like in the first movie, they were like, all right, we're taking Lethal Protector and Planet of the Symbiotes and we're kind of, um, you know, kind of reinterpreting those stories in a way and then mixing it with our own story. I can't wait to hear what this movie is going to be based off of. I hope it's kind of based off of maybe the hunger a little bit, like parts of the hunger. They had a little bit in the first movie, um, but I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Uh, obviously, uh, the first appearance of Carnage. I'd love to see something around, like something based off those first three issues from Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, obviously, they're going to take out the Spider-Man part, uh, but I think that would be nice, you know, to explore that. And then maybe some of the scenes that took place in the Billy Bentine annual, the one where, you know, you find out Cletus had a childhood friend that he goes and tries, to, you know, to kill. Um, they revealed more of Ed, uh, Cletus's past in that one. Um, and then maybe even as recent as something like... Um, the cult of carnage or carnage born where they talked about how he was born and his like he had an umbilical cord wrapped around him um and he almost choked to death when he died or whatever or as a child he almost choked to death when he was born and uh, but then you know he he like survived it basically uh i i don't know i'm i'm still divided i don't know if i want the null stuff brought in i think that would be a big reveal for the trilogy because you know we don't know anything about clintar from the first movie so it's an easy fit to, uh, you know, have Carnage be like some kind of disciple of Null or just be a, a, a messenger of chaos in this movie and that, you know, guides Null's eye towards Earth because we don't know what Clintar is. We don't know who sent the, the, the symbiotes in the first movie, Riot, and all of them to take over Earth. For all we know, it was Null. Maybe in this universe, Null does exist and he rules over Clintar and this is his race of people and he's sending, the, sending them out. We have no idea. So we don't know if they're going to touch on that at all. Like I, I don't know. And I saw Donnie Cates tweeting like, hey, Andy, we should talk. <laughs> or, or someone like a fan said that and, and uh, Donnie Cates like, yeah, I'm open anytime you want to talk, Andy. So, uh, you know, who knows? And I know um, Donnie Cates had some influence on the upcoming season of the new Spider-Man cartoon, which is called Maximum Venom, which we'll be discussing very soon because I'm going to be going to D23 and covering the panel for you guys. So we'll have a lot of information from that very, very soon and maybe some interviews, I hope, too. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, but, you know, seeing uh, Anne come back is, is great. Having Annie in the story uh, aligned again. Uh, I'm curious because she's such a interesting character that they'd never really fleshed out too much in the comics. And then also I felt like she wasn't fleshed out too much in the first movie, but you kind of get who she is and you kind of understand there is, she does have love for Eddie, even though she's trying to move on and she's, uh, she, you know, out of the two of them, you know, Eddie's still stuck um, because that's the kind of guy Eddie is. He gets stuck on things and he can't move on and, and Anne is trying to move on, um, but uh, because the way Eddie is and because of her feelings towards him and because they almost got married... She's kind of still tethered to him in a way. And I can't wait to see how they explore that relationship in the next movie. Because although I like Dan and he was fine, I'm kind of hoping Anne is just single in the next movie. And they don't do the love triangle. And they just kind of have Annie maybe maybe like, all right, I, I was with Dan. But Dan had to move away for, for his career. And I didn't move with him. I decided to stay in San Francisco for whatever reason. And you kind of maybe build a friendship uh, uh, that could maybe lead back to a relationship with Eddie and Anne in the next one. I don't know. I'm curious to see where they go with it. I'm just spitballing like random ideas. But what do you guys think? Are you excited? I'm sure some of you are. I'm I'm hoping with, you know, Andy Serkis here and, uh, and with her excitement on this, I'm hoping that we really get more Annie in this movie and they do more with her. We learn more about the character and obviously the relationship between her and Eddie. I want to see, uh, you know, focused on a little bit more as well so let me know what you think in the comments down below i've talked long enough about this i've kind of just went on a rant but i'm just kind of excited about this uh, this is good good news to me and uh, as promised uh, in the next episode we will talk about absolute carnage number one so hopefully you guys now that these videos are up have had enough time to read it for yourself and uh, and you know digest it and and you're now chomping at the bit waiting to let me know what you think of it so in our next episode you can in the comments of the next episode uh, when i do that we'll review it 
And I'd love to hear your thoughts in that episode. But for this episode, I want to hear your thoughts on Michelle Williams coming back. Because I'm obviously very excited, but I want to hear what you think. Thanks for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.